We are among the fungus islands of Minecraft. The island is covered in mats of mycelium and towering mushrooms, as symbiotic animals thrive in its fungal abode. But how does this all work? What can mushrooms milk out stew? What functions do the giant mushrooms serve? And how exactly does the biome spread island to island? Starting off, let's examine the basic biology of all fungal life in the Minecraft overworld. The basic mushroom can spring up on dirt, logs, and surprisingly, stone. Presumably the mushroom growing on rocks don't deep very deep. Furthermore, it's possible that the mushroom species in general don't make very deep quote unquote, roots, as mycelium seems limited to the upper surface. These organisms probably feed on decaying organic matter, and in the case of the stone mushroom, or spores that got unlucky and landed on a piece of rotten flesh, spider eye, or some other form of detritus. I say unlucky because it's unlikely for these mushrooms to survive for a very long time, seeing as they can't actually eat stone. Importantly for understanding how the biomes work, we need to know how the mushrooms reproduce. Now since I assume you already know what a spore is, I'll only quickly describe them. A typically single-celled reproductive unit that can give rise to an entire individual by themselves. In our world, mushrooms are the main reproductive organs of the much bigger mycelium organism underneath. While this doesn't appear to be the case in Minecraft, we can assume that mushrooms still spore the same. Back to focusing on the islands, each one might be a superorganism, a collection of interconnected individuals that act as organs and even cells to the greater whole. In our world, fungi can and do grow massive, as well as form connections with other organisms. The latter part of this statement is important. Presumably each type of mushroom is a separate species, and separate species might have a hard time integrating with each other. Keyword here, might. Both varieties probably require very similar nutrients and growing conditions, meaning that if one can thrive, so can the other. As previously mentioned, mushrooms already integrate with far more disparate organisms in our world, so competition is not guaranteed. Why would Minecraft be any different? Not to mention, all other forms of symbiosis. Now you may be wondering how such a massive organism feeds itself. This is where their status as islands comes in. The sea is full of nutrients, and considering the mycelium's ability to transfer nutrients, those parts inland won't be going hungry. If my idea of bigger mushrooms being more well-fed is correct, then the islands are certainly very successful. And when the going gets tough, the interconnected mass can simply absorb the bigger members of itself. The next subject are the cows. Mushrooms seem to be bovines who have gained a symbiotic relationship with the toadstool mushroom. This is a symbiosis and not mimicry because if you shear a mushroom, they will become a normal cow, meaning that it's possible to remove one side of the proverbial equation. Furthermore, these cows will produce normal milk instead of mushroom stew like they used to. Visually, the mushroom is noted by its dark black eyes and colorful red and white spots. Seeing as this is incredibly distinct from how non-host cows normally look, I think the underlying mechanism behind the metamorphosis needs explaining. Firstly, despite its appearances, the eyes probably aren't holes, but are instead discolored from a buildup of blood, which can take a very black color. The biggest piece of evidence is when the cows are quote-unquote cured, they still have their eyes. Cows can't regrow lost eyes. As for the pigmentation, I chalked that up to fungus growing threads just below or even on the skin of that color. You might have noticed a ring of particles appear when a cow is sheared. These are probably spores, since such a relatively blunt method will probably disturb the shrooms which are being removed. And just the fur in general, a lot of reproductive units would be thrown into the air. Of course, the fungus extends deeper into the host. Again, the mushroom produces stew instead of milk. The actual purpose of the stew is to store nutrients. Like a more efficient version of the mushrooms on the islands, the big ones anyway, when sheared, the whole organism is severely damaged, like removing a chicken's head, we can eat it enough to be destroyed by the cow's immune system. I should stress that this is not how real mushrooms work. Removing a mushroom will not kill the overall organism. Now the fungal islands are isolated from one another. Presumably they must have spread from somewhere. Spores can travel a long distance, and the sheer amount given off would be more than enough to make contact with multiple land masses. The main reason these areas aren't converted into more mushroom biomes is simple, competition. 
On the microscopic level, the fungus simply can't reach the mass necessary to generate even a single carpet of mycelium. If that's the case, then why are there mushroom islands to, or biomes to begin with? Quite simply, sheep, or any other grass-eating animal. There were numerous islets dotting the seas of the Minecraft world, and since sheep can swim a long time, eventually some may have stumbled into these isolated buffets. Ultimately, they graze down to earth, where the sheep either leave for greener pastures, or starve. Once this happens, the spores land on uncontacted ground and start reforming the landscape. Remember how I mentioned UV radiation and its effects on cells? And how does an island exposed to blazing sun manage to survive? Well, let's take a look at our own skin. Humans produce a chemical called melanin, which shields from UV rays. Other forms of life do the same. Well, similar at the very least. The mycelium does this, but not the mushrooms, which is why mushrooms do better in dark environments. The bigger mushrooms might simply be too big for sunlight to properly kill it. Its outside may be a covering of dead cells, which, being already dead, can neither die or can be used as shields for the living cells. It's also possible that the mass transfer UV blocking chemicals to other non producing sections of the superorganism when we got to the island level. But why don't all mushrooms produce mycelium? Certainly it would be helpful. Well, maybe they can't. This is an idea that may go against what I have said previously in the video, but please bear with me. You see, I have an idea that the mycelium spread and the mushrooms are actually different but symbiotic species. Both can survive by themselves, but the mycelium possesses spores of the fungi hidden within its own spores, similar to how animals live within others on our world. When the less competitive mycelium lands on occupied spaces, it's destroyed, allowing the mushrooms to quite literally break out of their former compatriots shells. On the other hand, when it lands in not occupied land in the sky, the much more UV resistant mycelium was the first to spring up among the two. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, this is just my interpretation of the mushroom biome. What's yours?